Now in this video, I'll give you the in-depth review of the Samsung Galaxy A70 and then I'll tell you why that this is hands down the best smartphone battery that I have personally used. So keep watching. Hey, what's up guys? Adam Lobo here and you're watching Adam Lobo TV. If you guys are new, hello and welcome. Do consider subscribing to this channel as I release videos every single week, sometimes twice a week. And if you're returning as a subscriber, welcome back my friends. Now since this phone is not officially released here in Malaysia, I don't have the box. So let's go straight to the specs. Now going over to the phone specs, the Samsung Galaxy A70 has the octa-core chipset with the Adreno 612 GPU. It is coupled with 8 gigs of RAM with 128 gigs of storage. And then it comes shipped with Android 9 Pie with Samsung's One UI 1.1 and it has Bluetooth 5.0. Alright, let's talk about the color options. It is available in white, vibrant blue and coral and the one which I have is the very unique classic black where instead of a typical black color, it has a very nice spectrum light shining at the back of the phone. Now as for the phone's built at the back, it is made of plastic but it looks super close to glass and I gotta say that I really love the thin flat screen design finish to the front and the buttons at the side help with the grip of the phone as the phone was also pretty light at only 183 grams. And then the three lenses is arranged in a vertical position with almost no camera bump and like its younger brother the A50 and the elder brother A80, it has no fingerprint sensor at the back as it has the in-display fingerprint sensor. Now as for the phone spots and buttons, looking now below there is the headphones jack and then there's also the USB-C port and a single speaker grill. Then looking on the left, there is just a SIM card tray with the micro SD card slot which supports up to 512 gigs of storage and then on the right, it has a really nice tactile feel for the volume rocker and also the power button which once again, I gotta say that I love how clicky that the button was as it makes the phone feel really nice and grippy as you know where exactly the button is. Now as for the phone screen, it has a really nice 6.7 inch Super AMOLED display which is still the nicest looking displays. It has an Infinity U display and the screen comes with a resolution of 1080 by 2400 pixels with a high 86% screen to body ratio. And of course, viewing videos on the phone was really nice and since the bezels are pretty thin at the sides, even watching Netflix was nice but please keep in mind that the screen covers just before the notch area. And once again, I'm starting to really love the flat screen when it comes to consuming videos on the phone compared to the curved design which most phones have right now. And for the camera specs, there's three cameras at the back as mentioned. One is a 32 megapixel f1.7 aperture and then there's the 8 megapixel f2.2 aperture ultra wide 12mm lens and there's the 5 megapixel f2.2 aperture depth sensor lens. Now pictures on the phone was really nice as usual during the day and even during harsh lighting conditions or towards the evening. Samsung has definitely improved from the overall software processing for its images, especially for the live focus mode compared to its previous generation. Now like other Samsung phones, there is no dedicated night mode but Samsung's regular scene optimization was good enough to detect night or even low light shots and the shots was really nice and not too overexposed or even overly exaggerated. Now as for the front camera, it has a high 32 megapixel count with the f2.0 aperture lens instead where again the shots was really nice and clean and the extra enhancement to focus on the face during the live focus mode was really great. Now as for the phone's video taking capabilities, it can record up to UHD 4K 2160p up to 30 frames per second where the quality of the video was really nice but the image stabilization was only present on FHD video so keep that in mind. And then compared to the high flagship like the Samsung Galaxy S10 series, you can only change the video focal lenses only before recording the video instead of during the video so you'll need to plan ahead before hitting the record button when you're taking videos. Then the video quality for the front camera was not as stable and smooth as the rear camera but overall it was great. Now as for the phone sound quality, there is the mono frying speaker as I mentioned earlier just next to a USB port and overall it was decent and loud and here's a quick sound test. Your eyes come to me, I'm humbled constantly. 
A supernova inside is a Now looking at the phone software, it is shipped with Android 9.0 Pie and my newfound love of the One UI skin and I really love how snappy the overall experience is and the more I use the One UI, I seem to kind of like it and although I'm a big fan of stock Android, the One UI skin definitely comes second favourite right after the Oxygen OS. Okay, the main highlight for me is definitely the phone's battery life. Now I never gotten to test any one of the Samsung Galaxy M series fully yet but hands down that this is the best battery life phone in any smartphone that I've tested with a huge 4500mAh battery and yes once again I really respect phone manufacturers who can fit a huge battery like 4500mAh battery within this thin phone frame as I got a total of 7 hours and 19 minutes of screen on time Nice one Samsung and the good news is that the phone also supports fast charging at 25 watts. There's no wireless charging since it's plastic, but that is just a small little compromise for a huge battery life where you won't have any battery anxiety. So this phone is perfect if you guys want a phone with amazing battery life. Now another huge plus point is the phone's gaming capabilities as there were no issues running high quality games like Asphalt Night as it ran really cool with absolutely no heating issues when running games during a brightly lit area and even PUBG on high quality settings without any issues. Now in conclusion, the Samsung Galaxy A70 is a really good smartphone which I would fully recommend if you guys want a super reliable mid-range smartphone which has a really good battery life and takes great pictures and most importantly runs really cool no matter what environment or heavy task that you throw at it. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram or head to my website at www.adamlobo.tv for the pricing updates and the official release here in Malaysia. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this review and you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up. Like, share and subscribe to Adam Lobo TV if you haven't done so. Don't forget to hit the bell icon just next to it to get notified for my future videos. Thank you so much for watching. This is Adam Lobo and I'll catch you guys in the next video.